Honourable Deputy Leader of the Official Opposition. It's quite ironic to hear the Liberals, Madam Speaker, day in, day out, claiming that everything is fine in this country because of the astronomical spending that has caused the country to face the greatest inflation in 40 years. The cost of food has skyrocketed, but they're not responsible. Rents have doubled. Not their fault. Interest rates are making it impossible for young families to dream of owning a home. Not their fault. Why, after eight years, is this Prime Minister so irresponsible regarding the problems of Canadians? The Honourable Minister. Madam Speaker, I understand uh, the reasons for which the Conservatives find it hard to connect with Quebecers. It's because their economic policy is simply one of austerity and cuts. On this side of the House, we have implemented a number of measures to support Canadians and Quebecers. We increased benefits for seniors. We created a new benefit to help families pay for their rent. We have created a subsidy program for dental care for youth. Every single time the Conservatives voted against. The Honourable Deputy Leader of the Official Opposition. We have to listen to the Minister. But listen to us. They are still boasting. After eight years, they are so disconnected from reality. Middle-class families are increasingly turning to food banks. Another greater number of Quebecers, and we saw in the news this morning, have to find a second job simply just to pay for food. Seniors, after having worked hard all their lives, are now asking for help to eat. Once again, the minister will tell us how much they've done to help, but the real question is, why and that she should be asking herself is, why are so many people suffering after eight years of this Prime Minister? The Honourable Minister. Madam Speaker, it is true that the uh, world economic situation is unstable, and that is the reason for which we have to be here to support Canadians and Quebecers, Madam Speaker. I don't understand how my colleague can claim to have compassion for Canadians who are finding it hard to make ends meet whilst voting against measures that will actually help them out, Madam Speaker. We will always be here to support Canadians. The Honourable Member for Saint-Jean. Madam Speaker, Quebec schools are feeling the full impact of Roxham Road. Since the start of the school year last September alone, Quebec has had to open 224 new classes just to accommodate the children of asylum seekers. 224 new classes. Uh, while we are in the midst of a teacher and specialist shortage, 224 new classes, the vast majority in the Montreal area, where schools are already filled far beyond capacity. There is a human cost to this, and I'll come back to that. But first of all, is the federal government committed to footing the bill, at least footing the bill? The Honourable Minister for Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. Madam Speaker, we must respect our internal and external commitments. For asylum seekers, I have a meeting today with my Quebec counterpart, so that we can continue to support asylum seekers and to continue respect international and domestic rules and regulations. The Honourable Member for Saint-Jean. Madam Speaker, we are short-staffed in our classrooms. We simply cannot give our teachers more and more children who don't speak French and who are more likely to have special needs. The elastic is stretched to the very limit. To pull it further is to cut the quality of education offered 